There is a tradition that certainly goes back to Adam Smith, if not earlier, of, of explaining the behavior of markets in, by simple assumptions, and, and mainly by the assumption of self-interest. So the great insight of Adam Smith, you know, in, uh, in The Wealth of Nations, was, was that you don't have to postulate any agent or any planning or any central planning, but the equilibrium that we see in the economy is produced by people who are self-interested, who are acting in their self-interest. Now, when you have that basic idea, which is completely basic to economics, to make it work, that is, to make it generate precise predictions, you have to make assumptions about what people view as, as their self-interest, what they're trying to do, and, and you have to assume that whatever they're trying to do, they're doing well, because it's just much simpler to assume that whatever people are trying to do, they're not making mistakes. So the assumption of rationality came from there. It was that in order to have a theory that predicts something about the behavior of markets from assumptions about individuals, it's very natural to predict that people don't make mistakes. It's, it's, from there, when you try to develop a very precise theory, then what does it mean not to make mistakes? Then it begins, then the, the concept of full rationality uh, develops, and it's a concept that's very non-intuitive. Basically, it means that people take everything into account and that all their beliefs are internally consistent and all or their preferences are internally consistent. And this is simply because if you have decided that you are going to assume rationality, there is no obvious limit. Then there is a definition of rationality, and, and, and that's the way it goes. So the, the development makes perfect sense. You start from self-interest, you try to explain what self-interest is, and you end up with a rational agent.